Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Bellhop board game unboxing video. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Thank you for joining me today as I unbox a game from Board and Tail, which is a company out of Hamilton, Ontario, fairly local to me and actually hometown of my podcast co-host Sean. This is a standalone expansion for the game Stratos. And I can't really see it here, but it does say Light in the Darkness. So Stratos is a big box game. This is a smaller box, two-player version of the game that can also be used to as an expansion or to add up to six players to the original game. So it notes um, there's a whole bunch of people involved in the team. Uh, this was released in 2006. Uh, oddly, there is no actual description of what you can expect in the game, which is a bit of an odd choice. Again, I apologize. Everything white gets very washed out on my camera. At least you can kind of see the team here. So we are going to open this one up. I, the only thing I have done at this point is remove the shrink wrap. Now, I do have to let you know... Board and Tail sent me a copy of this game and the full game for me to review and talk about. So this is sponsored. They did send me this. I did not pay for it. That, I don't think, is going to influence my opinion on the game, but I want you to know just in case you think it might. Really solid box. Nice, thick card. Um, some rather superfluous side art. We have rule book. Oh, rule book. White on white again. And a whole bunch more stuff. So we're going to grab the rule book quick. Uh, this probably won't show up well on the camera, so I'm just going to flip it through. Oh, actually, it's showing up better than I thought. One more page. There we go. And scenario is right on the back. So flipping through really quick, you got the setup, how to win, turn phases, tiles and resources, spells and treasure, and then monster rules for Stratos, Light in the Darkness. This is only 12 pages total. One of the things that's interesting is the way the company sold the game to me is they said it is like a mix of Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. Those are their words, not mine. We have baggies. Thank you, Boards and Tail, for including baggies. I love everyone that includes baggies with their games. We have resources. So we have some stone. You know what? I'll take each of these out. One. One of these out. I'm uh, probably going to remember not remember what all of them are. But nice wooden meeple resources. We have stone. We have triangles. I think this was spice. It's supposed to be like a little pile of spice. Again, uh, I played the original game, but I don't quite remember. Again, nice wood. Nice thick. Good quality. No chips. No uh, uneven painting. Uh, we've got, I think it's iron, but it's uh, it's another resource. It's a black parallelogram. I think that's, no, it's not a trapezoid. I'm forgetting my basic shapes here. It's a bad sign. Uh, what look like roads, but if I remember they're another resource, might be wood. You know, if I had the rule book open, I could probably tell you. Then we have bags of grain, I think they are. It might be gold. Hey, nice, high quality, good resources. We have standees, plastic stands for standees. I'm not going to bother opening those up. We have a standard RPG style D4 and D6. I know RPG style D6 because it is numbers and not pips. So you have a D4 and a D6 in black. We'll get to this after. We have a box of cards. That is nice. Comes in a tuck box. Bonus there. That is, that's impressive. And then we have a bunch of small cards. Oddly, the Hobbit-sized cards don't seem to have their own box. I will open those in a moment. Then we have one of my favorite parts of Stratos, the inset player boards, or boards you play on. Now, because it's only a two-player game, normally every player has their own board. There are two here. What's really nice on these is you put tiles on them, and they sit in. I love inset. Thank you. Then we have counters. We'll hold these up. So you can kind of, there we go. It's actually turning out pretty good. So we have character classes that I think were not in the original, which is kind of cool. So you've got some kind of really tall elf here. We got more tiles. And more tiles. And more tiles. And more tiles. 
So one of the interesting things on Stratos, I think I need to show you, there's some interesting stuff here, like a Grim Reaper. But I think this is worth showing, just because this is something I know from the original. Ah, uh, where did I put the Vegastanis? Okay, so the character cards have notches on them. I thought this was an interesting way to track the things you get. So for example, if you are defending, you would take this little defend token, though I don't know exactly where defend goes. Defend goes here. So you have this, and then you have the defend token, and you actually slot the defend token onto your little card, so that shows that character is defending. So everyone playing the game can see it clearly across the table. Uh, other examples are this guy has Fleet Foot Battle Boots. So this is a, a piece of equipment. So you have a little token that says Fleet Foot Battle Boots. Eh, almost in focus for a second there. And you would slot that in in the equipment section. So that would slot up on the top. And now you can tell this dude has these two things. I gotta admit, it doesn't look very elegant, but it's a cool way to track things. The other thing I noticed that is an improvement from the original game is there are actual graphics of the Fleet Foot Battle Brutes. So one of the things I mentioned in my original review of Stratos is these tokens were just a bunch of words and it was kind of hard to find. So that's a neat touch. It's, it's something interesting I've never seen before. Uh, your hit points are trapped at the bottom as well as I think it's your, um, your hit points and your XP. Yeah, your spirit. So you're tracking those on there. So I kind of dig that. And then you'd have your standing moving around the board. The other thing I do want to show off is how nice these inset boards work. So I'm just going to punch out one of these tiles. Some of these have information on the back because when you discover them, you flip them. Those are going to go onto your boards and make your 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 land, right? Oh, we got to there. So, and that's not sliding anywhere easily. I can almost go vertical here and that's staying on there. So that's nice because these boards sometimes can turn with different spells and such. So quality actually better than the original. So that is this is actually a step up from the original game. Two player only, but has some improvements over the original printing, which is nice to see. That's cool. So we're going to slide this stuff back in. I'm not going to punch the whole game in front of you. We could do unpunching videos. I've thought about it. So we're going to take a quick look at the cards. We have an exacto. I should probably be using it. Okay, so to be honest, uh, not knowing the expansion, I don't know what these do. Art's fairly solid. Uh, these look like they're some kind of objectives. I will admit the art style is very unique. You may love it or hate it. Here's a really good example of the rather unique art style, the skinniest elf I've ever seen. Oh, come on, it focused a second ago. You get the gist. Uh, these are a bunch of cards, Horde, Defeat, Horde, promote. Promote is how you level up your guys. Most of these are promote and defeat cards. So these are just a way to replace an opposing unit's health points to zero. So these look like more status cards. I'll show off the Horde card too. I'm not going to show off all of them. Again, rather unique art style. I'm sure some people love it. Some people are hate it. I'm, it's okay. It's unique. I like the fact it's unique. So now we're going to open the very impressive deck box. I love this. More games should do this. Fantasy Flight should be on this one. Putting deck boxes in all their games. I would be very impressed by that. Tuck boxes. So nice, easy to open. Wow, they're going to really make me work for this, though. More shrink wrap. Okay, so we're going to undo those. Uh, again, having not read these new rules, so there's something different. So, I don't know. This just says monster rolls, shows some of the terrain. Um, we've got secret map fragments, scroll of singularities, lagoon explore. Okay, so these are explorations. So, these cards happen when you explore a piece of land. You flip it over and it has a number one. It means you draw one from this deck, and then it tells you what you find. So, this is a secret map fragment. Again, I like the layout. It's very nice. There's a nice map on here. There we go. Thank you, camera. Here's something else you can find is uh, Pools of Renewal. Another thing to note is the art style is not consistent throughout. So it looks like different people did different parts of the artwork. The list of credits in this game is pretty huge. Um, good way to flip through this deck is probably not going to be... So just looking through a few. Uh, this is a spell. I remember those from the first game. Again, fairly evocative art. Uh, text is a little small in these, but not tiny. 
we got a real mix of stuff. So the cards are in different orders. So here's another monster placement. So the rule summary cards are just mixed in. So whoever printed the cards didn't print them in sets. So it's kind of weird. You go and you got a couple lands and you got a couple items and then you got a couple maps and then a rule summary card. So a lot of these are the exploration cards as I showed off earlier. Um, again, here's another rather nice looking fireball type spell. I dig the art on those. The land types are very clear and easy to tell apart. It's another fairly nice looking spell card. Really like the art on the spell cards. Whoever did that, big bonus. It's another example of one of the exploration cards. And that is pretty much it. There are all the cards. So that is, I'm going to put this back together, but that is Stratos Light in the Darkness, a standalone game or expansion for the original Stratos. Uh, so far, I'm impressed. Production quality is improved over, over the base game. Uh, I do like the fact this is made locally, local, fairly closely local. This is uh, comes from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. They did send me this game to take a look at. Uh, this plays two players only. The original game plays up to four. So we're going to toss everything back in the box. Extra baggies are nice. Um, based on the size of the original box, I don't see any reason all this wouldn't fit in the original box. I'm going to keep it separate, though, because I really do want to play this two-player first. So here we go. That was Stratos. My camera doesn't like lightness. Light in the darkness. Stratos Light in the Darkness from Board and Tail. Now you are watching the Tabletop Bellhop unboxing video. You can join us every Wednesday night on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Tabletop Bellhop where we record the Tabletop Bellhop live podcast. That show is dedicated to answering your gaming and game night questions. Uh, we do also review games and talk about the games we played in the past week, but it's all about the questions you ask us. If you do have a question for the Bellhop, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. We're here to help you. Join us every Friday night. We stream Gloomhaven live, also on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash tabletop bellhop. That's at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching here on YouTube and you dig this video, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. That would be fantastic. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.